Voices for Justice is a podcast that uses adult language and discusses sensitive and potentially triggering topics, including violence, abuse, and murder. This podcast may not be appropriate for younger audiences. All parties are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Some names have been changed or omitted per their request or for safety purposes. Listener discretion is advised. My name is Sarah Turney, and this is Voices for Justice. Today I'm discussing the murder of Destiny McLean. At around 3.30 a.m. on July 18, 2021, 23-year-old Destiny and a crowd of others stood in line at a Phoenix taco truck waiting to order food. Out of nowhere, shots were fired, and Destiny was hit in the chest. Despite life-saving efforts from the people nearby, Destiny passed away. Her case remains unsolved. This is the case of Destiny McLean. It's a Saturday night in July in Phoenix, Arizona. 23-year-old Destiny McLean and her friends have long-standing plans to go out with a co-worker who was having some issues with their marriage. In an interview with Destiny's mom, Brenda, she told me that despite Destiny being more of a homebody and not really wanting to go out, this is something she'd been planning for close to a month. She says this is just who Destiny was. A very nurturing person with an extremely big heart, and they were really close. She'd been telling her mom all about this night out for weeks, but for one reason or another, Destiny and her friends couldn't meet up with a coworker. But they've been building up to this for so long, they decide just to go out to the Corumba nightclub. Destiny grabs an Uber, and as always, makes sure that her location is shared with her family. She comes from a big family with two older sisters and one younger. Unfortunately, Brenda had already lost her firstborn, her son Dominique, years prior. Brenda told me that in addition to just sharing their locations with each other, when her daughters plan to go out, they always make sure to check in with someone about where they're going and when, and when they plan to be back. So, in the Uber on the way to the Corumba nightclub, Destiny is on FaceTime with her oldest sister, Brianna, all the way until she meets her friends at the club. The plan was for Destiny to let her other sister know when she was on her way home. So, Destiny and her friends go out and presumably have a good time without incident. At 2.30 a.m., Brenda gets out of bed to let the family dog out to use the restroom, and realizes that she has a missed call from Destiny, so she calls her back. But it seems that Destiny actually called her by mistake, basically a butt dial, and Brenda says that she's so happy for this accident, because it would be the last time she ever spoke to her daughter. Now, when I reviewed Brenda's interview, I realized that summarizing what she told me could never do this story justice. It could never fully represent what she and her family went through that night. So here is Brenda. And I saw I had missed a call from Destiny. So I called her back and she was out and, you know, basically I was butt dialed and, you know, but I'm happy that I called her back because I had one last opportunity to say I love you. And, um, you know, she sounded like she was having a good time. And she's, you know, she's like, I love you, mommy. And I'm telling her, I love you. Be safe. And, you know, I'll see you when you get home. So maybe two hours later, my daughter Essence is looking from room to room, looking for Destiny. And she comes in and wakes me up and she says, Mom, have you talked to Destiny? And I said, well, I talked to her a couple of hours ago. You know, she had butt dialed me and I called her back. And she said, well, Mom, she said she was going to send me her location and she hasn't sent me her location. So I'm checking her location and I can see where she's at and it's a it looks like it's at a taco stand. So my thought process is Destiny worked nights, so it's not unusual for her to be up this time of morning. And considering they were out trying to, you know, take someone's mind off of something, maybe they're having breakfast, you know, and maybe her phone is in a car. So I'm texting her and I'm calling her and she's not reading my text messages. So my daughter Essence is doing the same and my youngest daughter Faith is doing the same and we're all calling and texting and she's not responding. And I said, well, I feel like something's not right. I'm going to go look for her. And so my girls said, okay, well, we're coming with you. And as we were driving, right when I was getting off the I-10, I had this real eerie feeling just come over me. And a while back, uh, there was another situation where somebody was attacked. And for some reason that just came into my head as I was getting off the freeway. 
And so, you know, I kind of had a, a sense of dread. And then when I pulled up and see a crime scene, that just kind of solidified something was wrong. And the officer told me, well, ma'am, you know, you, this is a crime scene. You can't be here. And I said, well, I'm not leaving. My daughter's phone is here. I've tracked it here. She's not responding to my text messages. She's not responding to my phone calls. Something's wrong and I'm not leaving. She's here somewhere. And so the officer said, well, you know, you can stay over here off to the side right here. So I'm sitting in my car and I'm starting to panic and I grab my phone and I go back to the officer and I said, look, this is my daughter. Is she hurt? And that's when they said, sorry. They said, ma'am, we're sorry. Um, this is a homicide and it's a female victim. So that's when I knew. And um, at the time, like I said, I, I knew something had happened. I knew, but it was just like, you don't believe. So I spoke with the detective and they told me that Destiny had been shot. Um, because the investigation was open, they couldn't give me too many details. So, um, yeah, that was the day. And it was just trying to wrap our heads around it. You know, my husband was there, my stepson, my